no wait. We're recording. Psalm 108. I have the NLT translation. This is what it says. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, Lair and heart. You know, wake up the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all people. And I'll sing your praises among the nation. For your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your unfaithfulness, your faithfulness, not unfaithfulness, your faithfulness, reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heaven. May your glory shine over all the earth. Now rescue your beloved people. Answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by His holiness. I will divide up Shechem with joy. I will measure out the valley of Sukkot, and Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is too. Ephraim, my helmet, will produce my warriors. Any warriors today? <coughs> yes. And Judah, my scepter, will produce my kings. But Moab, my washing basin, will become my servant. And I'll wipe my feet on Eden and shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring victory over Edom? Have you rejoiced? Have you rejected us, O oh God? We will no longer march with our armies. Oh, please help us against our enemies. For all human help is useless. With God's help, oh, with God's help, we will do mighty things. He would trample down our foes. God, we, we know your word is true. And that's the very reason why we're here today. It is to know you, to experience you, to encounter you, to come closer to you. We ask that your heaven to come down today. We ask that your kingdom come this morning. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let this worship be unto you this morning. Let our praises go to you this morning. We'll give an order to the heavenly realms that your power will be upon this place. Your anointing in Jesus' name. Let's worship. Come on, church. 
Forgive our hands if there's any sins that separate us. We ask forgiveness this morning. Open up the heaven this morning. We invite your presence, Holy Spirit. Come and convince us all the sins in Jesus' name. Let the key
You really? 
Somebody a high five I haven't met before. Say hi to someone across the room, behind you, in front of you, around you. We have a few announcements for your church. Just gotta give it up for Fernando this morning. Woo! Woo! Labels of freedom. Welcome visitors, we're so happy to see each and every one of you here. We're very excited for all that God has done in our church and in our community, and we're even more excited for what he's about to do as we continue to pursue him, amen? Um, how many of you have not been to our Bible study group yet? If you have not, we have two cell groups or Bible studies at, on Wednesdays in Venice and in Los Angeles, and they both start at 8 p.m. So if you're interested in coming and you haven't been, let us know at the end of the service. We can give you the address and we can text you with more information. Um, tomorrow, we're gonna have a worship night and communion night at um, Andrea's house at 5.30 p.m. At 5 p.m., sorry. Um, it's in Hollywood, and it's going to be really special, really exciting. Let's celebrate the holiday together as a family, as a communion. If you want to come before, she has a pool. I'll be there tanning, so, and Apollo will be there tanning, too. <laughs> so if you want to come.
come, it'll be really fun. Um, also, on the 29th of this month, we're gonna have our dream team meeting. So if you're part of the team, if you're a volunteer, if you serve in the church, make sure that you set apart every last Thursday of the month so that we can get together and um, hear more about the vision of the church, have communion, it's gonna be a really special, fun time as well. Um, we have plenty of space for you to serve in the church. If you have not been involved and you want to be involved, if you want to volunteer, we want to be a part of your spiritual growth. Um, and we want to be a part of, of you being a part of this community. Community. Um, we want to be a part of your training. You know, um, God usually, before he takes us to where he wants us to be, he takes us to a process of training. And um, it's a really special time, and it's a great opportunity that you have here to be under the leadership of Pastor Anna and Pastor Lucas, um, where they can pour out all of the knowledge and the power and the anointing that God has given to them to you. So take advantage of this opportunity um, and let Pastor Anna or Andrea know at the end of the service if you want to be more involved and if you want to serve in the church. Um, also, in September, I know it's far ahead, but we want you to separate this week. It's going to be from September 3rd to 11th. Um, 10th? 3rd to 11th. 3rd to 11th, yeah. Um, our prophetic conference is going to be really exciting. Um, our Apostle Hina from Brazil is going to be coming over here. And um, we're going to have a whole week of evangelism, tourism. We're going to go to Venice, Malibu, Hollywood. And then at, on the weekend, we're going to have um, a conference here at the church. So make sure that you start asking your bosses for the week off, especially the weekend off from now, so that you have this time to receive all the blessings that God has for you during that time period. Amen. And finally, make sure that you turn off your cell phones. Thank you so much for coming. This would never be possible without each and every one of you. We love you, and God loves you even more. God bless you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right, guys. We we come at the end of the at the month. Can you believe it's already the end of the month? This is crazy. I can't believe it. And we just want to thank you for each one of you for being part of this community. And many of you do so much extended ways to bless our church. And as you see, Andrea. She's passed on to you some envelopes, some flyers to you as well. We have a, a thing called Push Pay, which is a way for you to participate in your giving. Uh, it's called uh, the Push Pay app. Uh, it's created by a company called the eChurch. And uh, we are part of this community as well. In this way, you can donate wherever you want. If you're not prepared today, cash and check or any way, uh, you can download the app and you can actually donate at any time. For example, you want to give your offering, you didn't come to church, or maybe watching us online this morning and you're not here, you can download the app anywhere in the world. And what happens if you live in America, uh, when you prepare taxes every year, it's it already did the map for you. So you know exactly how much you gave uh, throughout the year. So you just print out and you just give to your tax person. It's so, so much easier for you as well to manage how much you have been giving to your community and to the church uh, here in Los Angeles, the work that God has and wants to do in your life. Another way as well is to do tax message. You can give in text. Uh, you tax 77977 to Snowball Church. Uh, there's no LA, it's just Snowball Church, 77977 to give. Amen? Also, if you have checks uh, in cash, uh, and Joe will be here in the front as well, uh, you can bring it up. Amen? I'd like for you to stand up with me this morning. And uh, if you have your wallets, your phone, uh, I want to bless your life. I want to ask God to increase abundantly in your life. 
We have a promise from God that He will supply all the needs of our lives. Uh, we give back to God a portion which God has given us the whole. It is nothing compared to what He has for the future of our lives. Uh, we can trust God in some areas of our lives. We can trust God in all areas of our lives. Which one do you think is better? A little or everything? I heard one time a preacher said, you know, either you trust God a little bit or you trust God all. Now the guy said, either you trust God all or you don't trust God at all. Amen? Uh, close your eyes, lift up your offerings, lift up your purses, and as we worship Him this morning, I want to bless you. God, we're so thankful for this community. We're so thankful for what you've done so far through us, in us. And Lord, oh, there's so much more in the future of the life of this community that you want to do and reach out in so many ways that we can impact people today. Thank God for the internet that wherever people watching this morning, wherever they are, they can be impacted and they can make a difference, even financially, God. So today we ask you that your kingdom come in every each household, God. We ask you today that your power will visit every person. God, people have come to this place. They have come to this church. They have come to even America, God. And they don't know what to do. They don't know what to, to say. They don't know where to go. And they don't know what to, to do with their lives financially. They've been struggling financially to get through, to get by. I ask you today, God, that you pour out your wisdom. That you pour out vision in each one of them. That you open the heavens for your people. Let the kingdom come, that the develop that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bless each one of their uh, their doings and goings and whatever they do, Lord. Let them prosper. Let us see heaven come. That will be done. Let the increase come in each one of them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship Him. You are love. future. The best is yet to come. We know, we believe that you've done so far. It's nothing. It's a insignificant portion to what you're going to do in the future. And we believe today, God. We ask you that you multiply it in each of our families here today and that you increase so much of the life of this family. Thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name.
Church, I, I want us to pray uh, another thing. It is so sad that we, we see people coming, we see people going. It's a joy when babies come, which the church is a, is a family. And we believe in this thing called parenting. Uh, the vision of our, our church, the vision of our family. So I always say this and want to repeat this to you that my wife and I, we've never wanted to have a church. We always wanted to have a family. The difference between us, I could say, not comparing to any other community, but our global church, Snowball, Bola Genetic, we don't only have pastors and leaders, we have parents, we have fathers and, and mothers. You know, it's really comfortable, it's really easy for a pastor just to come and perform in the, in the pulpit. And there are amazing pastors, there are amazing leaders in the world today, in many different sects of Christianity. But then we, what we treasure the most, and Anna and I, we never wanted to change, is this, this paternity, this thing called family, this thing called father, this thing called mother. Every father needs a father too, and I'll never neglect my parenting, my parents, Apostle Hina, he, he, he watches us, you know, often, he listens to our podcast, he listens to our, to our YouTube channels, and I know that he's always watching, always praying over us, because there's the very reason that God has placed in his heart as a, as a father. So it's a joy when people come to our, our family, people walk into this family, uh, for the first time, and it's for us as parents, but for my wife and I, it's like receiving babies. Amen. It isn't it a bundle of joy when when the, when a baby is born. We have so many babies being born in our church. Our, uh, we have you know a lot of mothers you know coming in with their newborn babies, and it's so so beautiful. It's so such a joyful moment when you go to the hospital and somebody gave birth. You know. The, the, the moment, it's, it's so magical. And if there's a, a gospel word for that magical, it's, it's such a blessing to see it. But it's, 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 a, it's a, when people go, it's, a, it's hard. Because we know they're going to go one day. You know, one day, we're going to go to our real parent, to our real father. And well, one day we're going to depart from this life. And we're going to go to heaven. And when there was a guy came in here, he was so broken. He, he needed so much help. His name was Ken. And he was here with us. And there's so much that God did in his life. He received so much love that he didn't receive before. And he was so rebellious, you know. He, he would fight with us, and that's what kids do. You know, kids rebel many times against their, against their parents. But the, the thing is with kids, they come back. They come back. They come back, and Ken left, and, and he went back to Massachusetts, and then he came back again last year. And then he left again. In his rebellious ways, he leaves again. He doesn't say anything. I pray that you never do this. I pray, church, that you understand the concept of family. Don't just abandon the church. Don't give your back to the church. And just say, I'm gonna. That's it. I'm not gonna do anything else. Not gonna say anything to the to the pastors, and that's what Ken did. He left, and and he would sometimes call again. We'll talk. And uh, his mother called me last night, yesterday, and she said that uh, the police called him, and 
and uh, they said that Ken's body was found in his house. Ken Perry passed yesterday, yesterday morning, and uh, the police said that right next to him was the, his Bible, and he had pictures of our of our church all over the room. Everybody that knew him, one thing that he always loved it was it was our church, our family. He would go to many different churches in, in the East Coast, but he, he always says, Lucas, you know, I know that my my home it was snowball. And uh, I want us to pray for just a couple minutes for his family. I want us to pray for his mother. Her, his mother's name was, was Kathy. And... Uh, and also Ken had a daughter too. We did not get in contact with the daughter. We don't know how to get in contact with the daughter. If you do know how to, if you if you search on, on, on Facebook, if you find a way to get through his daughter, I would love to talk to, to her and uh, pray with her. Amen? And uh, Lord, we just thank you for, for all that Ken represented in his family, in this family, God. And, we well, thank you for that journey that that he had here with us. But there is a moment for for us to go home. And Lord, you said in your word that you give life and you take it away. We pray, God, that uh, we pray for those who are re who are here. I pray, Lord, that uh, you minister to Kathy's heart and everyone that was close to, to Ken, Lord. We pray that you give the comfort that we don't have. You give them the peace that we don't have. You give them the grace that we don't have. Because all those things come from you. If we do have today, it is because you gave to us. So I pray right now, God, that you meet his daughter wherever she is today. Lord, I break any, anything that comes against this family, especially bitterness. Thinking that God, you, you're so bad, and you do so many bad things, and that's a lie from the enemy. I pray, Jesus, that you continue to to finish the work that you started in Ken's life. You give us a legacy in the call, and we know that many times someone has to be sacrificed in order for people to live. Jesus, you did that for us. You died on the cross. In order that we have life today. And we ask you those things in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, if we can, we're going to count on two, three. Sorry, I'm very emotional today. Amen? It's, uh, it's hard. You know, things hit me. It takes me a long time to receive things. My, the closest person that I was, the closest person to me was uh, my grandmother. My grandmother was like uh, my mother, my second mother. And when she, she died, you know, I was numb. I didn't feel a thing. I didn't feel anything. I couldn't process. I think I'm a little bit slow. <laughs> Every man such. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, it took me a week until for me to cry. I didn't cry. I couldn't process. I couldn't process the thing that just happened, you know. It takes a while sometimes for us to understand what's, what's happening. And then uh, a week later I cried. Then I cried. I cried like a baby. With, with Ken yesterday when I received the news, I was preparing the sermon and, and 
didn't, it didn't hit me. You know, I was numb. You know, uh, his mom called me, and then I, 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 it's sorry to say, but you know, I kind of like, I was trying to fake it, you know, that I was crying to her, you know? I, I, sorry that I did that, I'm being honest with you, you know, because I couldn't, I couldn't understand, you know, this, this was, was happening. So I, I'm emotional today, just, it, it hit me today, amen? And, uh, so if we can, if you help me, cheer me up today, amen? So as I'm preaching, say, go, pastor, we love you, <laughs> all right? Say, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> everything's going to be, everything's going to be fine, which is fine, amen? You know, one thing that I don't worry is when kids die, you know? When we understand as we are children of God, you know, we go one day. And it's okay for us to die. Amen? Because we know where we're going. The problem is that when we don't know where we're going, and that's the big issue, and that's what we're here this morning. Amen? I want to talk about those things, you know. We got to make sure that we know where we're going when we die. Amen? Uh, let's count it to three and help me, cheer me up, and let's clap some hands. Let's, let's go some woo-woo. Amen. <laughs> and the Father help me. All right. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in this morning. Thanks for watching us on YouTube and Facebook Live. Uh, and our, of course, our podcast subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing and listening to us. Every week is a joy to be in your homes, wherever you are. If you're ever in Los Angeles, come, come say hi to us and visit us. Amen? Open your Bibles this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians Chapter 5. I'm going to read from starting with verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Did you find it? All right. Good. Good, good, good. This is what it says. This means that everyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. I like this. Again, this means that everyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Paul was making some sense here. And this is the point where he reveals what he's trying to say to us, even today. I love the Word of God that spoke with them 2,000 years ago, speaking with us 2,000 years later today, 2017. And then we don't know how long this world will be here today, and we don't know until Christ return, it will continue to speak to people for eternity. Forever. It's what it says. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Amen? Verse 18. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to Himself through Christ. And God has given us a task. Tell someone this morning, say, you have a task. Mm -hmm. Tell someone this morning, you have a purpose. But more than a purpose, you have what it says here, a task. And it's a task of 
reconciling, reconciliation, people to Him. Reconciling people to God. Amen? Amen. A task to reconcile people to Him. This is not a job for pastors. Only missionaries. This is a job for every believer. So turn to your neighbor and say, this is a job for you. This is your test. Amen? Amen? Close your eyes real quick. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this passage of scriptures. It's so powerful. The old is gone. The new has come. We ask the Holy Spirit for your instruction. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have you ever heard of the enemy? Yes. Did you know you have an enemy? Yes. His name is Satan. And Satan has a kingdom, if you didn't know of this. And for just a few moments, I'd like to just give you some background and introduce to you these two kingdoms. Number one kingdom is the kingdom of Satan. If you didn't know he existed, let me say to you that Jesus spoke more about this than anything else. He spoke about hell more than anything else in the Bible. And why this is so loving? Why talking about hell? Why talking about Satan? Why talking about the enemy? Oh, pastor, so negative. You know, I don't want to hear anything negative, so I'm walking away. Jesus spoke those things because the Bible says that God is love. We understand that last week we talked about that Jesus is God as well as is the Father is God. We always say this. We grew up saying this. Most of us in Latin American countries will say, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? And this is what the Bible teaches. It teaches about the Trinity. So Jesus, He loves us so much that He would always tell us things to make sure that we know the truth. So nobody was saying, you know, nobody told me this before. Nobody told me this before. Well, I'm telling those things because they're real. And we cannot run away from the schemes of the enemy. So if there's a kingdom of Satan, the name already says that he, if there's a kingdom, he rules and he reigns in in this kingdom. But then you ask this question, you know, God is so loving. God is so powerful. Why did it allow Satan himself to have a kingdom? And the answer is very simple. We allow this to happen. Because the authority that is now Satan's, the authority was taken from us. Us. In given to Satan himself. The authority to rule and to reign for us in this world. Because God gave us this task to rule and to reign on earth. God made us in his image in order for you to rule and to reign. But when we disobey God, what happens is this, church. Our authority was taken from us. And our authority was given to the enemy. So the only reason why the, the, the enemy has authority to mess with our lives today is because we give him the room. But we say, you know what? I'm going to have a serious talk with Adam and Eve. Well, this is very simple, church. We need a serious talk. Because every day when we disobey God, this is what we do. We give authority to the Satan. To do what he wants to do. Thank God for Jesus. He dies on the cross. He's our mediator. He's our bridge. 
Because there was a separation between us and God. Now Jesus, he became a bridge in order for us to now commune and to have a relationship now together with God again. Every time we sin, we, we do this. We give authority. The authority that is given to me, to you. We say, Satan, now here's, this is all my authority. All that God has given me, I'm giving it to you. Understand? That's why, that's why many people come to this city. They don't understand the concept of just being famous, rich, wealthy, and all those glorious and marvelous and, and wonderful things. They don't understand that the gift that is theirs and the authority that is theirs to be used for God, it is now giving all the authority, all the dominion to Satan, to the enemy. And every time we sin, this is what happens. But thank God for forgiveness. God for forgiveness. Amen? Amen? Because that's the work of the cross. It, God does not say that we're never going to sin. The plan from the beginning was that we're never going to sin. That's the plan of God, that we never disobey God. God said, there's one rule, now we have many rules. Did you like that? We have many rules today, but back then it was one rule. Don't touch the tree. That's it. Don't eat the fruit. You know, just don't touch it. Not even go to the extended to get the fruit and eat it. You know? So we eat the fruit. We disobey God. We say, God, we don't want to be with you. We want to disobey. Why? Because I want power. I want power. And I want power. The reality in church, it's a false power that is given to us. The money, those things, the glorious things of this life, the power that you think we can have when we have so many people that have to be submissive to us, it is a false power. The real power that comes from God only and only alone. So the only reason there is a kingdom, a kingdom of Satan, that he rules and reigns here on earth is one day we disobey. But let me think, let me say something to you guys. Thank God, before I go any farther, thank God that every time we sin, we can ask God for forgiveness. Amen? And the Bible says that God reconciles us back to the Father. And that's the reconciliation. We spent a few weeks talking about relationship with God. The relationship with God is that. The honesty, being honest with God is when we're honest about our shortcomings. When we're honest about our mistakes. We're never going to be immune from the evil of this world because we live in it. Because we face it every single day. That's why salvation is a process. Amen. We receive it one day, but now you grow in salvation with God, in the image of God. That's why it's so important for us to go to church and have a community that we can grow together. Because I went to the forest and I learned something about redwoods, which is the, one of the strongest trees there are in America. They're really strong. They're really big. But did you know that a redwood does not survive by itself? They're so powerful. They're so big. The redwood, if you Google the redwood, they're, they're strong. They're huge trees. Trunks hum humongous. But did you know that the root, the root doesn't go too far? And the only way for the redwood to stand still, strong, and to grow is when they are planted amongst other redwoods. You know why? The only thing that, that holds a redwood up is when the roots are entangled with the other redwoods. I like this. The only way. And there's a church. Amen. God called us his trees, his redwoods, because he knows our tree, our, our roots. They don't go so far in this world because this world is contaminated. The dirt is contaminated. The air is contaminated. 
This is what the world is about. That's why we live here so little. So little. And then we have a choice. We have a choice that we have to make today. This is the choice that we make every day. I'm going to be part of the kingdom of God. Or I'm going to be part of the kingdom of Satan. Am I going to be entangled with the, with the roots of the tree of life and God and in the church? Or be, be entangled with the roots of evil? And there's a kingdom also. Because we can partake of the evil of this life. And we can be entangled. Our roots can be planted in wrong grounds. And what happens is this. They don't go so far. Because destructions will come. Amen? Amen. So, in John 14.30, Jesus speaks. And He says, I don't have much more time to talk to you. Because the ruler of this world approaches. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan. Yes. In newsflash, Jesus says, by the way, okay, so make sure you understand this. Make sure who's the boss here. He says this, and by the way, he has no power over me. Can you clap your hands for that? Amen. Yeah. Jesus has the power. He has all the authority. Amen. In heaven. This life, this world. It's not going to be here for too long, church. We've seen what happens to the dinosaurs. <laughs> it's not going to be here for too long. We're, we don't need a lot of times the help of the enemy to destroy anything. Because we're the biggest destroyers. We're the biggest destroyers. We don't need anyone to do any harm to other people. We don't need Satan. He's only one. Okay? We destroy everything. And we don't need anyone. But that's why this is so important to talk to you this morning. Because we're destroying one another, church. And this has to stop. Amen? Amen. Amen. This has to stop. Once you insert it in the work of God in the church, the only way to go is up, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Amen? Amen? And if we don't grow, we're just stagnant. And you know what Jesus said, if, if you don't grow, if you don't bear fruit, Jesus said himself, he will cut the tree down. That's the reason why I emphasize those teachings and talk to you about this, because we need to go up, church. We need to reach heaven. We need to gain people for Jesus. We need to bring heaven on earth. We need to cry and ask God, bring your heaven on earth. We have a task. To do in this life. And of course, obviously, we have the kingdom of God. Say, thank God. Amen. Again, I can use many verses, many, many uh, Bible verses to you, but when Jesus speaks, I think there's a little more power, there's a little bit more authority. Amen? He is the head. Matthew 6, 9 and 10, you know this. We, we say it every Sunday. It says, this then is how you should pray. It said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Two kingdoms, the kingdom of Satan. And of course, Jesus, many times he talked about the kingdom of Papa. The kingdom of God. Amen. And where is the kingdom? Of God, I I was traveling with uh, Joshua and Anna this week, and Monday we stopped in Fresno. Did you know we have a Bible study in Fresno? It happens every Friday night. If you ever up there that way, and you want to go to Yosemite, stop by in Fresno, say hi to our friends there. Maybe they're watching us now. We love you, Fresno family, and. Uh, when we went to bed, Anne and I, in Joshua, Joshua, for him, was an unknown land. <laughs> he, he didn't know where he was, so he was like a little 
Mommy, when are we gonna go home? Are we gonna go home now? I'm ready. It's two o'clock in the morning. He wants to go home. We just drove ten hours. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna go home. No, we're gonna sleep right here. <laughs> and we go to the room and we go to bed and he said, I don't wanna sleep here. I want to home. I want to go home. And this is what Anna said. And this is very profound. And this is very true, church. She said, Joshua, where your daddy is, where your mommy is, that's home. Where is the kingdom of God, church? The kingdom of God is, is wherever you are. And wherever you invite God to be, there He is. There He is. That's why Jesus taught us how to pray this prayer. He said, the kingdom come. Because you have the authority. The, the authority was restored back to you when Jesus died on the cross. The same authority that which was lost in the beginning, in the fall, is given back to you this morning. Do you understand you have authority? You have authority to bring heaven to earth. You have authority to rebuke the actions of enemy in your life. You came to destroy. Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. So there's no comparison between you and the works of the devil. But you know what happens, church. You know what happens. We don't ask. We don't say anything. We don't fight. And our fight is not against people. Our fight is against spiritual beings. The Bible says, Paul told us, you know, our fight is not against flesh and blood, it's against principalities, and it's against powers, the rulers of this world. The ruling this system of called the world. They inserted in the world. And you and I, before we came to Jesus, that's where we were. We were in the world. We we're lost in the world. One day, you decided, you made a choice. Okay. The devil has no power over, over God. Maybe he has a power on the system here. And then you realize, okay, which, which side should it be on? Should it be in the side of the kingdom of, of Satan? Which has limited powers in, in all that he does is lie and gives me something that it's a peace that it's only for the moment. It's only momentarily, but it does not last forever. Or should I go to the kingdom of, of God where forever and ever he will reign? And the peace that he gives me is everlasting to everlasting. To everlasting which one which side should it be should it be on and then one day you realize I said well there's no comparison because the things that I get from the enemy it is just for now and the consequence of it haha <laughs> I don't want to be part of that and then we choose I want to go to the kingdom of God to where he is in and he says to me that he will give me life. And the life that he gives me is abundant. And the peace and the joy that he gives me is everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. It is forever and ever and ever. Because his kingdom never ends. One day the kingdom of Satan will be destroyed forever. It's going to be vanished going to be gone. God could give one, one thing. He could say, Satan, minions, demons, and they're all going to be gone. <laughs> but still there is sin. We're still messing up. Many times we still don't get it, the message. And we don't care what the cost is in this life. We don't care what the cost is. We don't care what the cost is. The consequences. We don't care. And that's why we choose many times. Unwisely. To follow the system of the enemy. 
into the things that he has in this world and this life today. We have a job, church. And the number one responsibility is this, to restore relationship with God. People to God. First, our, our relationship with God. Amen? Amen? First, ours. Because if you're not well, you cannot help others. Amen? If you're not well, you cannot help anyone. You can't. And that's the first, the church's first job is to restore people. That's why we invite people. Hey, come to church. Come to church. Come to church. Sometimes we got to go to the house. got to grab them by the hand. And they say, I don't want to go. No, you're going. And you, it's good for you. You're coming. And then they arrive. And then they come to church and said, wow, I liked it. And then next week, you know, hey, let's go to church again. No, 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 no. I don't want to go to church. No. They say, no, come on. Come on. Come on. And then you push them. You know, church, sometimes this is what we got to do, you know. We got to push them a little bit. Amen? They get it. They understand it. Now it's their responsibility, their choice. Today, you understand now. And you have a choice now. And if you don't want to go, you know, you understand the message. You understand the, the context of, of being saved, being inserted into the kingdom of God. And, and that's what we do. The, the first thing we do forever and ever, this is what will be. It's now, it's my relationship with God. You know, we bring people to church now. They make a choice to follow God, to grow with God. And now it is your responsibility. I wish people still help me to go to the gym. <laughs> I rented a house less than three blocks from the gym. Because I knew there was a gym right here, LA Fitness. It, it, and I cannot blame Anna. Anna, you cook really good. That's why I'm getting fat, okay? I cannot blame her. Hey. I didn't go to the gym, Anna. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't go to the gym. I, I can't blame Anna. I have to blame myself. It's my choice. You know, I could wake up at 5.30 in the morning, go to the gym, then go to work. But I like to sleep too much. <laughs> and it's hard for me. So there's a, a moment now where you understand the context of being following God and having a relationship with God and and this is the transition now we have to do. The transition now, it's once we understand now, what we do now is, is help others. Now you're coming. You're coming. And you don't give them choice. Do you want to go to church? Say, you're going to church. This is what, <laughs> it's like, you're going. Yeah. No, 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 you, you're going. You have no choice. Because you got to push them a little bit. And that's the church's number one responsibility. And number two, church, the responsibility of the church is to restore relationship with people. First, relationship with God. Number two, relationship with people. Amen? And how do you meet people? You have common interests together. You like to wear the same clothes. You like some kind of shows on TV. You like Christian Louboutin. You, uh, you have common things like my son now in a tour, they like the, uh, the shark face, you know? Everything's about the shark, you know? I kid you not, we were in Yosemite, 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 thousands of miles away from the beach. And he said, I want to see a shark. <laughs> so I got to go to the water, the cool water, and I go, I go dum, dum, dum. no, I'm just kidding, I'm going in the water. But... Everywhere we go in San Francisco, it's all about the shark, you know? It's the kind of face, everything shark. He has the plastic shark, he has the pelusia shark, he has the big shark, he has the movie shark, he has job number one, number two, number three jobs, you know? <laughs> He's four years old. <laughs> exactly, and the moves. Like Jagger, no, not like the sharks, and and uh, and that's what happens. You meet people, 
you have the same things and you love people at first. Check this out, church. You love people because you have the same interest. You like jujitsu, you get together. You like surfing, you get together with people. You like Lakers, it is like a tribe, you know, you have a tribe. But this is what happens. Just give time and conflict starts. Just give time, conflicts appear. If we're not mature enough to manage our feelings, our emotions, if we're not mature enough to apologize when we do wrong, if we're not mature enough, what happens? Our relationship, we destroy. We destroy our relationship with, with people. If we're not honest with enough with people, all of a sudden, it's going to be destroyed. And, and the enemy's number one focus is to break people apart. How does he do that? He throws something in the husband's mind. He throws something, a dart, inflame it, dart it's in, the, in, the, in, the wife's, in the wife's mind. And you are a couple, you're, you're gathered, you're married. And all of a sudden, in your mind, you say, I need to be alone. I need to be single. You understand, Redwoods? You cannot grow by yourself. Redwoods, you understand that you cannot do anything in life without relationships. And the enemy strategy, the first strategy of the enemy is this, is to make us lonely, lonely. And loneliness is not because you're single, because you don't have anyone next to you. Loneliness is when you choose to be away from people. You, you see the difference? Loneliness when you choose to not have a relationship with people. It's not when people don't want to talk to you, when they don't want to be with you, they don't want to marry you. Loneliness is when you choose to be apart from people and you choose to be alone. When pride comes, when pride comes, you say that you don't need people. You don't need anyone. You can do everything on your own. That's why you tell your neighbor, you need a, a family. Tell them you need a church. And church is God's way to build and to make people strong in their life's journey with God and their life's journey with people. Amen? It's first with God and then with people. You see, conflicts would come, church. In the title of my message today, let me unfold to you, is, is Restoring Relationships. Restoring Relationships. Because the attack is on you. You understand that? The attack of the enemy, the center of the, the, the kingdom of Satan, the attack is on you, on the church. The, there's no other place to go. The attack is on you. Tell your neighbor, relationship are always worth restoring. Relationship are always worth restoring. Because life is all about learning how to love. Why do you think God made you? God made you to love people, and God made you to love God. That's what we created. Purpose number one in life, amen? Purpose number one, to love God, and to love people. That's your purpose in this life. A car was meant to be driven. We were made to love. Woo! Can you clap your hands for that? Hallelujah! And God wants us to value relationships and make the effort to maintain them instead of discarding them whenever there's hurt and whenever there's conflict. Tell your neighbor, conflict and hurt will come. Conflicts and hurts 
will come. Any relationship between friends, between mates, between people, authorities, father, mother, it will come. We're not immune. Anyone is not immune from this to happen. And the Bible tells us that God has given us the ministry of restoring relationship. Right there, where we just read it. 2 Corinthians 5.18. This is your task, church. If you didn't know you had a task, today you have one. Your job, tell someone, your job is to restore relationships. Amen? And that's why... A great amount of the New Testaments devoted to teaching us is how to get along with one another. That's what Paul spent most time in his letters writing in order for them to get along with, with one another. You know, he writes in 1 Corinthians, open there, 1 Corinthians 6, 5. This is what he says. He says, shame on you. Shame on you, he says, Paul. He writes to the Corinthian church. It's his first letter. <laughs> first Corinthians, shame on you, he said. Surely there is at least one wise person in your fellowship who can settle a dispute between fellow Christians. He said, you know, you guys are fighting everywhere. And this is a moment, church, when people in the church... They're taking other people to court. You know, Vanessa, I don't like it. I'm going to sue you today. Hey, you know, that's what people are doing. People are suing each other church. You think it only happens in America? <laughs> it happened in the Bible. They, they bring people to court. Unbelievable. And, and this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 1.10. It says that, I will put as urgently as I can, Paul writes. And he says, you must get along with each other. You must get along with each other. I'm not talking about today. Today you say, I love everyone. <laughs> and today you have no conflict with anyone. But let me tell you something. Church, conflicts will come. Your relationships will come. And you know the worst thing, the worst thing we can do is to create conflict in the house of God. It's an abomination. It's an abomination to God, says His Word. Let me tell you guys, it takes hard work. Look what it says in Matthew 5, 9. Matthew 5, 9. Jesus said, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will, be, they will be called the children of God. Notice, church, he didn't say, bless are those who love peace. Bless are those, he did not say, bless are the peace lovers. He didn't say that. Bless are the peace lovers, because everyone loves peace. Neither he say, blessed are the peaceable. Blessed are the peaceable. Who are never disturbed about anything. This is what Jesus said. Blessed are those who work for peace. Smoking a joint. Putting some hippie clothes on. Going to San Francisco in your VW bus. Not taking shower for weeks. <laughs> having all the sex you can have. That's not. And throwing peace signs and peace in love. As soon as the sex stops and as soon as the weed is out, you're going to kill somebody. You understand? Peace is not what you say. Peace is what you do. It's, it's really easy to say, I'm a peaceful person. Okay, let me hang out with you a little bit. <laughs> and let me irritate you a little bit. B 
being peacemakers, church, okay. is very different from the concept of the world of being a peacemaker. You know, because Jesus, Jesus, many times, he fought. Jesus created conflict many times. And Jesus, many times, he rebuked people. And that's our job as a church. That's why we need one thing called discernment. When we should fight, when we should confront, and when we should love them, when we should be easy to them. But in reality is this, church. You don't grow without the winds. You don't grow without the pain. Do you know how a, how a, a red tree wood grows? You know how a red tree wood starts? It starts with a seed about this big that you cannot barely see it. Our leader in Fresno, he gave me a red wood seed. It was, it, it couldn't, I couldn't see it. I need glasses to see it. Okay? But if you throw the red seed in the ground and you put some water in it, it will not grow. You know how it grows, church? When there's fire. That's why there's fire in the woods. Because that's when they, it sparkles and the seed begins to blossom. The seed begins to grow and be natured. It's crazy, isn't it? There's no other way for a redwood tree to grow if there is no fire. It's going to be some fire in our lives. There has been some fire in our lives. And then for them to be strong and to grow stronger, you need also the wind. You know, the storms of life, as we know, the lack of money, the lack of understanding and discerning what's happening here today. You know, we need the wind, church. That's how we grow. Peacemaking is not avoiding conflict, running from a problem, pretending it doesn't exist, or being afraid to talk about it. That's actually being coward, church. Amen? That's being coward. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, was never afraid of conflict. In one occasion, you know, he provoked for the good of everyone. Sometimes we need to avoid conflict. Sometimes we need to create it. Sometimes we need to resolve it. And that's when we must pray for the continued guidance of the Holy Spirit. Tell someone, you need discernment. We need God's help. Peacemaking is not always giving in, acting like a doormat. Allowing others to always run over you is not what Jesus had in mind. He refused to back down in many issues, standing his ground in the face of evil opposition, church. But the big question is how to restore broken relationship. I'm going to talk about two things that my mom was done. Two things. Two things how to restore broken relationships. Tell your neighbor, you're called to do this. You're called to do this. This is your task in life. Number one, talk to God before talking to the person. Amen? You know there's a conflict happening in your life? A close friend of yours? Don't go immediately, go and talk to the person. Church, when there's a conflict, pray. Talk to God. And often we get in the same struggle over and over again because we don't pray enough. Discuss the problem with God. If you pray about the conflict first, instead of gossiping to a friend, you will often discover that either God changes your heart or He changes the other person's 
without your help. We often, we talk to people that have nothing to do with the problem instead of talking to the person who created the problem or created the conflict. And we start passing information to people. And often the Christians say this, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Marty, I'm going to tell you something. But I want you to pray about it. You understand what, is she, what, what the person is doing to Mari? She's passing on information. Information that she had nothing to do with this. In passing information, it is gossip, church. Amen? Passing information is gossip. If you hear something from someone, it's, ah, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Is the person here? No. Okay. Do I have anything to do with the situation? No? Okay. Am I proud of the, the solution of this problem? Uh-uh. Okay. I don't want to get involved. And you walk away like this. See you later. We often gossip. You know, number one thing of churches, why they're destroyed? Churches, the work of God, the most sacred work there is in this world today. There's nothing more sacred than the church, the work of God. Number one, number one thing is gossip. And the target number one church of the enemy is the pastor. Did you know there is a target right here? And the enemy is trying with a bazooka pointing out right in my heart. And you know how this destroys the work of God? They begin to pass up information. Many times the information is not true. Or many times it's half true. That's what the enemy did as a snake in the garden. He was passing information to Eve. Amen? Remember the story? Passing information that was half true. The enemy, he's not going to expose the whole reality in true things. Why? Because you're not going to fall from it. So he gets a half information, and then he does it. If you have a problem, church, with the leader in your life, if you have a problem with the pastor in your life, if you have a problem with anyone, Bible study leader, whatever it is, talk to him first. Don't talk to anyone else. Talk to him first. If you have a problem in the church with anyone, don't talk to others. Did you see what she did to me? Ah! Another person says, Oh, I saw it. And, ah, it was bad. And then really, you saw it? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah! Whoa! Yeah! Yeah! Whoa! And then the other person, she, maybe she doesn't even know what she did against them. And then what happens is, they involve one, two people, three people, four people, five people, six people. Everyone gets involved in a situation. And the person, right here, maybe has, it doesn't even know anything what's going on. Everybody's talking about, right there, this, this person. Five, six, seven people, they all talk about it. And the, per the person is like, what's, what's going on? What's happening in my life? Destroying the church. This person needs forgiveness. This person needs love. This person needs acceptance. This person needs to be heard. Maybe it was bad what she did or he did to, to that person. It was pretty bad. It was awful. But don't tell others about it. It happened in our church often, in Brazil church. You know, Apostle Rinaldo, our, our pastor, he's a, he's a lion. And what happens, he tells people things. And they don't like it, what they, they heard, what, they, what he said to them. And instead of, instead of the person going talking to our pastor, this is what happens. They talk to everyone else, but they don't talk to the pastor about it. When the pastor should have been there, you know, should, you 
you know, respectably talked about. I didn't like what you said. Okay, you didn't like it. Okay, this is what the Bible says. Third neighbor said, "Pass it on information." Pass it on. Is as gossip. You often discover that either God changes the heart of the person with or without your help. So if there's a problem happening in your life, our task is to reconcile people to God and reconcile people to other people. The first thing we got to do, it is to pray to God. Amen? And the biggest problem we have is prayerlessness. Prayerlessness is when we don't pray about it. In James 4, 1, 2, it says, What causes fights and quarrels around you, amount you? You want something, but you don't get it. You do not have it because you do not ask for it. Guys, we don't have many things in life because we're not asking God. For it. Instead of looking to God, we look to others to make us happy, to get angry when they fail us. And God says, Why did you come to me first? Write it down. Number two, I always take the initiative. I always take the initiative. It doesn't matter where you are, off the offender. Or the offended. God expects you to make the first move. Don't wait for the other party. Go to them first. Restoring broken fellowship is so important. Jesus commanded that it even takes priority over group worship. Open your Bibles as we end this message in Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Come on in. Johnny the Great. You see what a mighty voice Johnny had today. Whoa! Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. It's what it says. So if you are presenting your sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled with the person. Then come and offer your sacrifices to God. More than anything else that God treasures the most is the unity between people, church. Of course, we're talking about the context of a church because this is what we are. Family of God. But you know what happens when broken relationships happens in the business? It destroy great companies. How many families have been destroyed because of lack of reconciliation? Either people go to church or they don't. They're part of the of this world. Even though they're Christians, they're not Christians. They have the same struggles as you do. No one is immune from the struggles of life. Even us following Jesus. The only difference between us and the homeless in the street, and the beggar in the street, even a prostitute, is God, church. That's the only difference between us and the world. Is that one day we chose to be in His family. And faith takes works because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. We can say that we are 
who we say we are, we believe what we say we believe, that if we don't show people love and compassion, if we don't show people the peace that surpasses understanding, they don't want to be part of something that you can say perhaps is, is good for you. Today we're going to worship God. And I want you to come to this altar today. Present your sacrifices. Praise God today. If there's a need of reconciliation, when you leave this place today, maybe you need to call your father, maybe you need to call your mother, maybe you need to call someone. You're called. Life makes no sense if you have something against someone. If you are not the offender or the offender, it doesn't matter. Be mature enough to take the position of reconciling. God wants to restructure your life. God wants to build your life from the ground up. Take the first step. God, I'm sorry. I messed with this person. You reconcile your relationship back to God. But then you reconcile your relationship back to people. Lord, I know in this room here today, there are people who need to reconcile their relationship with you first. Then there's a relationship with the people, with others. And they are here today, Lord, to, to open a new life to us. Because that's what you call each one of us. You called us for a great purpose. And the greatest test that we can have in this life, it is to bring others to you and bring others together again to reconcile relationships, to reconcile families, to reconcile businesses. I pray in Jesus' name that today this is what we do, Lord. You rebuild families in this place today. You rebuild relationships, marriages are being broken, destroyed, hopeless. I pray that you rebuild, Lord, your church. Lord, we cannot build the church without you. We cannot build the church without your power. We're useless without you, without your peace. Come, Holy Spirit. Teach us. Give us your power. Give your anointing in order for us to fulfill what you've called us to do in this life. In Jesus' mighty name. Send up church for a moment. Worship God this morning. Talk to your Papa this morning. There are things in your heart that you don't understand. Be honest with Him this morning. Papa God, many things we don't understand. But you have the answers for all. Lord, restore your authority in this room today. The authority is speaking back to us. It is ours. The enemy has no power over it. In Jesus' name. Pray this for me. Heavenly Father, today we come to you. And you ask for your discernment. We ask you for a portion of your spirit. Flow in us, Holy Spirit. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Give us your grace that surpasses all of human Abilities, abilities to do anything in this life. To do anything in this life. We come to you, Jesus. We come to you, Jesus. Restore relationships. Restore relationships. First with you. First with you. Their relationship. In their relationship. With others. With others. I break and bind any evil spirit against people in this place today. And ask in Jesus' mighty name that you understand your call. That you understand what you created for. The evil would not harm you. He would not get you. All the works of Satan is destroyed in this place as we understand who we are in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray the prayer for the first time, just raise up your hands this morning. Say, it is me. I pray for this first time. Hallelujah. It is me. I want to relax our relationship with God. 
I want to restore a relationship with people. Hallelujah. Thank Jesus for that. Hallelujah. We're going to worship God. And Father, we thank you for the elements which we call today. We set before your table and we bless the wine, which is the grape juice presented here, which is your blood. And also, we bless the bread, which was broken for us. Today, there's healing in this room. In Jesus' mighty name. Which passes.